obviously the big issue is the local government funds. And, uh, you know, we're trying our best. Uh, it, it's tough. I've, over the years, have been very protective, very supportive of these funds not being touched. The history of the funds, of course, go back to the 1930s with the uh, implementation of the state sales tax. And at that time, for the state of Ohio to put on a new tax and uh, impose it on the uh, people of Ohio, they had to go to local governments and say to them, if you would join with us on this, uh, we'll share the revenue with you. And they did it again in the 1970s with the income tax. Because he talked about the tools that are in the current budget that counties can use. Uh, whether or not you agree with all these tools, I might not even read them out loud for fear that you might be put on the spot to tell me whether or not you agree with them. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but there are nonetheless some tools here that, uh, that you might want to take a look at and then get back to us and tell us if you agree. Do those uh, tools include uh, um, uh, Board of Commissioners being allowed to uh, form certain uh, what might be considered backroom administrative services yes. like Human Resources, IT, Central, or not, uh, Central Purchasing, yes. etc. I think, sure, we, we, uh, I am on the board of the County Commission Association. We've got copies of that. I gave it to the commissioners and to my team. Right. The reason I even bring it up, uh, Representative Shuring, is that, um, is that in almost all of those cases uh, where those that list is, uh, we have other task forces like uh, similar to uh, Judge Heath's uh, studying those very issues prior to these actually being brought up. Uh, for example, most people don't understand that boards of county commissioners can't form a human resources department and make everybody use it. They all think we're crazy. You know, they, I mean, it, well, why can't you? Business does it, right? But uh, unless the state allows it, as I'm, I know I'm singing to the choir here, unless the state allows it, the Board of Commissioners cannot do it. Um, and so that list is very interesting to this Board of Commissioners. And to your point, the one thing that I also find to be interesting is uh, uh, political subdivision shared services, where you could go outside the realm of the county and go to other political subdivisions within Stark County and think of ways you can share services there and, and uh, have economies of scale and hopefully increase efficiency. Things that we need to remember as we go through this budgetary process, even at this snapshot in time, there's still a lot of changes that are going to take place in the House. So what you see today is going to look pretty substantially different by the time it makes it to the House floor on May 5th. And then it's even going to be more different when it uh, goes to the the Senate, and then when it goes to conference committee, it will even take on a whole different uh, image at that point in time. Hopefully, each and every time it goes through another uh, part of the legislative process, it will look better. Uh, whether or not, at the end of the day, as it gets ready to be uh, finalized by both the House and the Senate and signed by the governor, whether or not uh, folks will warmly embrace it and claim that it's good uh, will remain to be seen. It's, it's going to be a tough budget no matter what, uh, but there is still a lot more work to be done, and, and that is where now, looking back to Mary, that uh, we, this is where you have that participatory side of government, where we need to hear what parts of the budget you don't like and why. The other thing I like to always look to, uh, when somebody says they don't like something, I, I tell them that an advocacy that speaks only of the problem and doesn't speak of the solutions is an advocacy that rings hollow.